Spinners! Spinners everywhere! It's the great spincopolypse! Okay. Maybe the world isn't going to end because of the spinners, but they do seem to be everywhere. Everywhere you walk, somebody has one. They're in almost every store that you see. So, how hard are these things to 3D print or design for yourself? Honestly, not very. The ones that you pick up everywhere are usually ABS. This one's ABS. And even solid metal. So it's pretty easy to design your own spinners. Um, download Fusion 360 from Autodesk. The usage is free as long as you're a hobbyist, student, or educator. Just create a new sketch. Create a circle for the inside of the bearing. In this case, I go with 2997. 2197. Create another circle around that. And I try to go with about 34. Switch to extrude, with the, which is an E. Extrude this up the seven millimeters for the height of the bearing. And you have the start of your spinner. So I usually go back to the original sketch and do edits off of that. You can add in other circles coming off of it, or lines, boxes, whatever you would like to do. In this case, I tend to stick with splines. So we start a spline on one edge, randomly lay in, or go, or work off of an existing design that you've drawn out on a piece of paper. Finish that spline up designs are using ball bearings and BBs. I simply need to add some small circles that are the correct size. I'm using quarter inch steel shot which comes out to about 6.3 to 6.4 millimeters. I'm creating these at 6.2 to make sure there's a tight fit and they can be hammered in and it fits quite nicely. So just place a few of those. wherever you would like. If you decide to move them, just select move, grab it, and place it. And once you're in move, you can just switch between them. So we'll put the three ball bearings right on the edge for this design. Then we go ahead and do an extrusion. And we do not want to extrude the holes, obviously, or the ball bearings would have no place to go. 7 millimeter extrusion. And we have one paddle. Now how do you do the rest? Oh, you have to go in and create another sketch for each one. How do you keep them the same? Well, this is where it becomes real easy. You go in and create a pattern, circular pattern. You change it to Features. Your feature is your extrusion. So you've got that. Go to Axis. Your axis is this center. And now you have a three paddle spinner. Or four, or five, or six. Or whatever you would like to go with. So we'll go with five for this. Select OK. And your spinner is basically done. If you would like softer edges, you can go in and add fillets. That's an F. And select these outers. And fillet this a couple of millimeters. Then you can flip it over. And do the same for the underside. this is the general idea of how to do it. You simply save this, generate a 3D print off of this, and you're good to go. So what are some other designs I've done? So here's a very simple design. Just in this case this actually holds pennies. You could use dimes, nickels, whatever you want to size for. 
Uh, this one is actually different than normal. It holds two pennies instead of a stack to equal to seven millimeters. This one is a little more difficult to print, but it actually spins quite well. Here is a design using splines as well. A lot of fillets to smooth that edge over almost to the point of being round. This uses quarter inch steel shot for each of those. Here's a design I created for my youngest son. It's about a 28 millimeter radius which fits in his hand. Uh, it's also smooth, not as much as that first. It's very small, very compact, and it spins fairly well. The mass is not far enough out to have a long spin or a fast spin, but it works well for a six to seven year old. Mine's a little more extreme. Almost looks like an octopus. Tentacles, that type of thing coming off. In this case, it's quarter inch steel shot. And then these are standard size BBs. While the steel shot is close enough to the seven millimeters where they can just be hammered in and it works well, the BBs need a spacer so that they don't go too far or too shallow when they're being hammered in. And then finally, here's a design. I think it looks like a T-Rex or some other type of dinosaur. You could simply put one bearing here, maybe another bearing here, and it looks like an eye and his nostril or something. It's odd looking, it's heavy, it's huge, and it's difficult to fit into an, even an adult hand. So, probably not a good idea, but it was something to play around with. Uh, it's quarter inch shot for the most of it. Uh, this is a standard BB, and then these are three millimeter bearings. So you can design basically anything that comes to mind, uh, play around with it, come up with cool designs, and print them out maybe 30 minutes to an hour, and you can drop some bearings in and see what you design for yourself. Go take a look at the designs after they've been printed. Design that has just the quarter inch steel shot on the edges, nice curves on the side. It would be much better if it was printed in ABS and smoothed in acetone, but the PLA was quick and a good check to see if everything worked. Here's the smaller design for my youngest. As you can see, it is very small. Spins up and doesn't spin for very long. The bearings are to blame as well. These are not the best bearings. Here's the design where I went a little crazy with the splines and a wrench steel shot as well as the standard BBs. And if the camera can pick it up, you can see that the BBs are sunk under the surface. And then the, here is the huge guy. We'll call him T-Rex. Very large. Barely fit, fits in an adult hand. It spins quite well. Due to, due to the additional mass on the arms. This little guy allows you to turn your spinners, any spinners really, into tops. Simply slip it through, add some compressed air, and you've got yourself a spinning top. I would not recommend doing that with PLA. There's a good chance they can shatter and then you'll have ball bearings and plastic flying all over the place. You could easily get hurt or cut. But to demonstrate that it does work, I'll give it a try. We'll try it with the small one. Slip it through and add some compressed air. And it works very well. Print out a few of the converters, and you could have little wars between all your spinners. So until next time, have fun and keep designing.